Hey there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this tutorial is going to show you how to paint these aspen trees with a pretty yellow sunset background. This is a very basic beginner level painting. If you are a first time painter, this can be something that you can do. It's a painting you can do with a group of beginner painters. It's easy enough for you to do with your kids if you wanna paint with your kids. I love doing these birch aspen style trees because they're really simple and they just make a really pretty composition for a lot of different kinds of paintings and colors. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And oh yes, this tutorial only requires one brush and five colors. So very basic, only one brush, only five colors. You can do it on any size canvas. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm using an 11 by 14 inch canvas for this and you can do this on another size if you don't have that size. And I'll be using the three quarter flat wash. So this is the only brush I'll be using for the entire painting. And I'm gonna go ahead and load my palette with red, yellow, and white. So the color, the name of the colors I'm using are titanium white, cad yellow, medium hue, and cad red, medium hue. However, you can use any white, any yellow, any red for this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my brush and I'm going to dip it in the water. I'm gonna grab a paper towel and tap it dry on the paper towel. And I'm gonna start with the color white. So I'm gonna load it in the white and I'm going to paint a circle. So the background is this radiating circular background with the bright, bright sun right in the middle. So do you see where my hand is placed? Over on the right, kind of my fingers spread out a little bit. That's how high my circle is. It's about, it's not exactly center, it's, it's toward the right, a little bit higher than the center of the right, but it doesn't have to be exact. So I'm just going to paint a circle. This is gonna be my sun, and I'm gonna go out about six inches. Having that white as a base is gonna help blend our yellow here in just a second. Then, without rinsing my brush, I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow on my brush and I'm gonna kind of uh, extend it out on my palette a little bit so that white that was on my brush kind of mixed with the yellow a little bit but not all the way. And I'm going to paint in circular strokes going around that yellow circle that I painted starting on the outside and I'm gonna gently blend it in towards the middle, but I'm not going to paint that yellow all the way in the middle. In fact, that middle circle, about two to three inches of a middle circle, is our sun, so that should be the brightest, whitest part. If you get a little bit of yellow in there, that's okay. So I'm just gonna keep painting in circles. I can grab some more white on my brush if needed, if I need to go back in that middle part and make it lighter. So adding a little bit of white on the brush helps with that. But we're gonna keep painting in circles going outwards and our color is going to get more vibrant. I guess you can say darker, more yellow and less white. So you can see how dark that yellow gets when it doesn't have a lot of white in it. And that's what we kind of want. Just grabbing some more titanium white on the way. When you grab the white, it helps to blend a little bit. And just So just loading it in the white, grabbing the yellow, just painting in circles all the way around. And of course you're gonna get to the point where that circle goes off the canvas. So just keep going in the same direction, go off the canvas, um, keep painting the circles. If you need to add a little bit of water on your brush, you could um, take your brush and dab it um, in the water just a little bit. Sometimes it helps get the paint to flow a little bit better. It doesn't seem to be painting as smoothly for you. A little bit of water helps. So I'm just gonna keep, so there we go, a little bit of water. And then I'll take that water and I just kind of mix it in the paint palette a little bit and then it's extra boost to flow. And then keep going. Um, I'm not gonna go all the way to the corners because the corners are gonna have some light um, orange blended in there as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab some more white and load your, my palette with a little bit more white. Um, I'm going to make this light orange color. It's kind of a coral looking color, kind of a peach color. So a little bit of red, a whole bunch of white, and then of course the yellow. I'd say about one part red, three parts, no, probably two parts yellow, four parts white. You definitely need a lot of white for that. Um, it should be a very, very light peachy orange color. Um, that's That part of the sky is not dark red at all. It's very light. So we want the background to be super light so our trees have enough contrast against that background. Um, but I'm just going to take my light orange peach color and continue with that circle thing going all the way to the corners. And I'm gonna um, paint the bottom part as well. So continue. Um, that yellow, where that orange color is meeting the yellow, it may blend, it may not blend. If your yellow is dry, it's gonna be a hard time to blend that. Um, but you can always paint a little bit of that orange color kind of over your yellow to make it look like it's blending. But I will say, don't stress too much about the blending in this sky. There's really no way to mess it up. If your blending is not smooth, that's okay. If there's streaks of yellow where there's not supposed to be streaks of yellow, that's okay. If there's streaks of white in random places, that's okay. Um, the trees are going to really disguise whatever you did to the background and it'll be very pretty so you really can't mess it up um, but i'm just taking the rest of this orange filling the bottom area with that and getting that all covered This next thing I'm going to do is optional, but it's something you can do if you want to brighten your sun up a little bit. So I'm going to just wipe my brush off here, grab the yellow. I could rinse the brush off if I wanted to, but I just wiped it off. I'm um, going to go back and just kind of redefine my circle, make that circle extra bright. And I'm just going to take this white. Now just be really careful with this white. Um, you want to only load a little bit on your brush. If you load too much, then this white is going to take over and be way, way too thick and bright. Um, but just lightly, almost dry brushing this. Dry brush means there's not a lot of paint on my brush. Just taking that and lightly feathering that white around that circle to make some bright white beams kind of circling around in the sky kind of adds to that radiating background effect and I'll just go back in add some more white if you want that to be super bright you can even rinse your brush off and add a very pure layer of white but it's got a good amount of brightness and it's going to look really pretty with our trees adding a bit of yellow close to there and done. Um, you don't want to overdo it because then everything kind of meshes together and turns into the same color. So you just want to kind of stop at some point. So then we're going to need to let this dry. You can take like a five minute break, uh, five, 10 minute break and come back to it. And it should be drying very fast because the paint was applied relatively thin, but I'm going to do the layer of grass next. So our painting has a grassy bottom and we're going to be mixing some different tints of green here. A tint is when you mix a color with the color white to lighten it up. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a, a layer of grass that's going to be super bright white or super light green kind of in the distance and our green is going to get gradually darker as we go down and I'll demonstrate straight that for you of course same brush and I'm mixing um, a little bit of green with a whole bunch of white so maybe about four parts white to one or two parts green and you can see what I'm doing on my palette there I made a light green and then I went a, even a, uh, a tint lighter so it wants to be it needs to be a, a very light green because we're gonna do grass that's kind of in the distance first and our grass is going to get darker towards the bottom that's going to create depth in our grass so I'm going to make these strokes holding my brush so that it's vertical and I'm using the tip of the brush and I'm just going to paint up and down strokes kind of going at an angle too and just taking my brush and kind of gently flicking it up and down notice how high I'm up 
Um, this is the furthest part of the grass. I'm not painting all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. I'm up relatively about two inches above the bottom of the canvas. So this is our first row of grass. So this is our light green first row of grass, the grass that's furthest in the distance. And I'm just taking my brush and gently stroking up and down, kind of going diagonal in some directions and overlapping some strokes that I've already painted to create that pretty grass texture. And then I'll be doing another row of grass. And this next row is gonna overlap the first row a little bit and I'll show you. I'm gonna make a different kind of green and I'm gonna incorporate some yellow into this. So I freshened my palette up with the yellow. I'm gonna just use whatever's left on my brush to blend with that yellow. And I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the green color because it needs to be darker, darker than the first row. So when I go ahead and apply the grass, it is going to show up a little bit darker and it's our next row. So it's gonna add some extra depth and texture. And so same thing, just using the tip of the brush, doing gentle strokes, going up and down and angles and different directions. And that is our next row. So I didn't paint that, that the height of that grass is not higher than the first row. So I'm not covering that up. It's just a next layer. And then I'm gonna go and do my third row of grass and you can kind of guess what we're gonna do. We're gonna get even darker. So I'm gonna grab some more green on my brush, kind of mix it with that color. And I'll be doing row number three. So same thing, start a little bit below that other row and do vertical strokes with the tip of your brush to create that texture. And there'll be another set, another darker row after this. So I'm not quite all the way to the bottom just yet. This next row is gonna be mostly that pure form of that green. I could rinse my brush off and dry it, but I chose not to. I'm just loading it in the just that green, and that's gonna be my bottom row. There will be another darker green after this. I'll actually load my palette in some black so we can go even darker with this green, and I'll demonstrate that for you in just a little bit. Um, there's a lot of yellow still showing through and that is okay. In fact, that really adds to the texture having that yellow from the background showing through. So it doesn't have to be 100% complete coverage with your grass. You'll drive yourself crazy if you did that. Um, but so there's a little bit of black. We, we really only, only need a tiny, tiny bit of black. So I've got the green. Very, very small amount of black, just a little bit on the corner. And you can always introduce more uh, and go darker, but once you go too dark, it's, you can't go back after that. You'll have to start over. So just very, very, very small amount of dark in there. It'll really darken that green up. So we just made a shade of green. When we mix black with a color, it becomes a shade. And we're gonna take our shade of green and go ahead and do the, um, final bottom row. This is on the very bottom on the edge of the canvas and I'll make it just a tad bit darker so it's going to show up a little bit better. So right there on the bottom is our darkest grass and you can see what happened when we did this light green to dark green. We created depth in our grassy area and make it look like the grass is kind of going in the distance and our trees are going to be next. So I'm gonna rinse and dry my brush. And also I'm going to load my palette with some fresh titanium white. And it may be recommended to rinse your water out right now. I did not, but if you want, you can, it's a good time to rinse your water out. So we, so here's my titanium white. So get that 
loaded. We're going to be painting the trunks of our aspen trees and those will be done with the color white. So wipe my brush off and load it with the white. So a good thick uh, amount of white on the brush. And I'm going to do my first tree trunk. So it is a rectangular shape. So we're going to start, pick a spot on the bottom of the grass, not the bottom of the canvas, our trees kind of nestled in the middle part of the grass. And this one is going to go at an angle and it's gonna go off the canvas, I decided. So I'm just holding my brush kind of vertically the way I did the grass so that I could control the thickness. If I use the full width, which I could, um, if you wanted to use the full width to create your tree trunk that wide, but I'm kind of churning my brush in different ways. Um, but the shape of these tree trunks do not have to be perfectly straight. In fact, the edges are a little bit organic and wobbly. So when I'm moving, when I'm painting this, I'm kind of moving my hand a little bit to make the edges a little bit uneven and kind of wavy. And so I did that. And then I'm gonna do a couple or another coat on there. So you can see when I painted that, it kind of moved, wiggled my hand a little bit so the edges are not exactly perfectly straight. And it's nestled right there next to that other tree. And it needs to have good coverage. If you did this and your yellow or your green are still showing through, you'll need to kind of wait for that to dry and do a second or third coat because this should be very solid white. And this one is going to go at an angle towards the right. Um, my goal is to not cover the sun. So I'm gonna leave that sun as an opening between the trees. And I'm gonna make sure when I paint it, the angle is not gonna cover the sun. And so I'm just going back over this one, kind of making the edges a little bit wavy. And then, so there's three trunks on the right. And I'll do two or the three on the left and I'll do two on the right. And so you can change the number if you want more trees or less trees, that's up to you. And this tree over here on the right, I'm gonna go ahead and paint it at an angle, slightly angled to the left. But again, I don't wanna cover my sun, I want that to be showing through. So this one's gonna be a little bit more vertical than the other trees. And feel free to get creative with this. You can even have some tree trunks overlapping each other if you want. This one is gonna go at an angle off to the side of the canvas. If you're painting on a stretched canvas where you have the sides on the canvas, I'm painting on a flat canvas but some of the canvases have they're stretched on a wood frame and that they go on the side you can extend your trees on the side and you can extend your colors on the side too um, but go ahead if you need to do like a second coat for coverage purposes you can there's a little bit of green showing through on the bottom parts of my trees but um, it's it's okay, that's enough to disguise that later with our black marks. But I'm gonna do some very simple branches on these trees. So I'm just using the tip of my brush to create that thin stroke with the white, and it's like painting a letter Y. So little letter Ys sticking out of the trees, using that tip of the brush, I'm just taking that in an angle and creating some other angled branch strokes. And then I can even grab some black on the tip of my brush and do some black branches. So same thing, little Ys sticking out on the top. I'm only doing this on the top and I'm not covering up my sun at all. So I don't want any branches to cover the sun. I want that bright yellow circle to be showing through the trees. And, um, I'm gonna be demonstrating how to do the black marks on our aspen trees next. And that would require you to have a paper towel handy because you're gonna be wiping your brush off and doing dry brush. So when we dry brush, we only load a small amount of paint on the tip of our brush, wipe 
it off with the towel. And then I'm gonna create the marks. So I'm gonna hold my brush so that the brush is going vertical. And I'm gonna use the full width of the brush to drag my strokes from the left to the right. So load the brush, a little bit of black paint, and you don't have to wipe it off each time. You can just very, very gently, lightly touch the canvas to create that same kind of lighter stroke. Or if you prefer, you can wipe it off with the paper towel each time. So up to you. And so I'm just gonna continue that technique. And we're leaving a lot of white from the trees still showing and a lot of variety. So some strokes are thicker, some are thinner, some maybe more lighter. So if I wanted to show up lighter, I would hold the brush very, very lightly. If I wanted it to be darker, I would press a little bit harder with the brush. And you can kind of curve your stroke too. When you curve the stroke, instead of making it go straight, you can curve it. it gives your tree a little bit of dimension. So just take that and kind of curve it. That one's those are a little bit more curved. And just fill up your aspen trees. If you want to be a little bit more advanced, you can even grab some white and mix the white with the black to create some gray tones in there. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can simplify it and just do the black. So very easy, very simple, very effective too. There's no way to mess this up. And I'm doing it on the left side of each of the trees. I suppose if you wanted to do it on the right side too, you can. But I don't think that technique would be very as effective if you did it on the right and the left. I just made them from the left, dragging to the right. I am going to go silent for a bit here while I finish up this step of applying the little black marks to all of my tree trunks. If you want, you can add a few more branches in there. I just did a few. Nothing too crazy because the leaves of this painting are going to be disguising a lot of what's going on at the top. And a few more strokes over on the bottom. And then maybe that one. Oh, that one got a little bit too dark, so it kind of extended the shape of that. Kind of gave it an interesting shape on that trunk. I'm going to do some more grass on the bottom of on the base of our trees to make it look like that those trees are nestled in the grass area. I'm going to rinse and make the dark grass color again. So the um, green with the little tiny bit of black just to make that uh, dark enough to show up. So on the base of each of our trees, I'm just taking the grass and I'm making it so it overlaps our trunks. And that'll make it look like the trees are not just floating there, they are nestled in the grass area. Gotta freshen up my green here because it pretty much dried on my palette by the time I was ready to use it again. So just the same style, but we're overlapping the base of the tree trunks. And the angle of this grass is actually going at different angles as well. The next thing I'm going to do is going to rinse the brush. I'm going to be demonstrating how to do the leaves of this painting. Very, very simple. So we're going to have some fresh red on our palette. You'll need to freshen up some white and yellow if you need to, if you're out of those colors on your palette. So rinse, dry, and we're going to be using the red. So loading the red in a pretty thick amount of paint on the tip of my brush. So there's a good amount of paint on there. And I'm gonna create my stroke. So the strokes are just short, angular, square slash rectangular strokes up on the top. And really, really easy. You're just taking your brush, kind of flip-flopping it to create those kinds of strokes. And then grab some yellow and you can make a orange color in there. So these are fall leaves, so orangish color in the top area. 
get some more yellow on there. So when you make orange, you're gonna need to use more yellow than red because that red is very strong. So grabbing more of the yellow and you don't even have to mix it all the way. So grabbing that yellow and making that stroke, you can see how that stroke is kind of blending with that red on my brush. So it doesn't have to be mixed all the way. You can even grab some white and do the white and let those colors blend on the canvas with that white create some lighter different shades of leaves maybe the sun's hitting them and they're kind of glistening and making different colors so you're just going to fill up your area at the top it's kind of an arc area because if you look at the shape of where the leaves are it kind of creates an arc over the sun I didn't want to paint any leaves over the suns. I didn't paint any trees or branches over the sun. I left that area open. So I'm just going to continue to fill up this area. You don't have to fill it up 100%. You want that sky and you want those branches and trees to still show through. But just have fun with the colors. Relax. Grab some different shade of uh, some different tints of white and red and yellow and you can create Lots of different pretty fall colors up there. If you like the look of the darker red, you can just use red, um, but I like the look of the different colors. I'm gonna go silent here for a bit while I fill up my treetops with some more leaves. Next, I'm going to do one final touch up to this painting. I'm going to rinse and dry and actually grab the white. I'm going to brighten up my sun and do a few more radiating strokes. So I'm just going to take that white and really define that circle again. So it's nice and bright, just the small circle area. Then I'll take that white and kind of dry brush some more radiating strokes kind of through the trees, but nothing too crazy. And that's my last touch up for this painting. So. I hope that you enjoyed painting this really simple, pretty aspen tree sunset picture. Great painting to do with beginner painters if it's your first time painting, or even if it's like your hundredth painting and you wanted to do something simple. Such an effective, no mess up design. I hope that you enjoy painting with me too. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me. Goodbye.